Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Non-Catholic Catholic Podcast. That's me. I'm the Non-Catholic Catholic. And we're going to talk about, well, some Catholic news. Now, I don't have a lot of time because I'm supposed to be back on the air in 30 minutes under a different podcast. So I've got to get right to it. We're going to talk about some Catholic news. I think this is very important. It is Wednesday, May the 13th, 2020. It is almost 6.30 uh, p.m. Central Time here in West Texas. So however you may be listening, wherever you may be listening, whenever you may be listening, I hope things are going well for you. And I hope that you will give this your full attention. All right. So let, let's start with a very important question. All right. We're going to start with a very important question. And to uh, ask this question and to answer this question, you won't have to rely on me. We're going to go to the Baltimore Catechism, very famous catechism in the Catholic Church. All right. The Baltimore Catechism. Question 21 of the Baltimore Catechism. Is there but one God? Is there but one God? All right. Is there but one God? Or we could say, how many gods are there? The answer is yes, there is but one God. There is only one God. Let me make that very clear. There is only one God. And if Catholicism is true, if Christianity is true, then that God is identified and defined in the pages of Scripture. He reveals himself as the creator of all things. He reveals himself ultimately by speaking of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. One God coexisting, three distinct uh, persons who are co-equal and co-eternal. All right, that's the only God. If, uh, if Christianity is not true, if Catholicism is not true, then there is another God that is true. But the catechism teaches there is but one God. That's what the catechism teaches. That's the official teaching of the Roman Catholic Church. There is but one God. Question 22 of the Baltimore Catechism. Why can there be but one God? There can be but one God because God is God because God being supreme and infinite cannot have an equal. All right? How many persons are there in God? In God there are 3 divine persons, really distinct and equal in all things, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And they go on to outline the Trinity. So, the Christian God there is one, but the uh, the Christian God is a triunity, a trinity, right? The idea of a trinity, one God coexisting, 3 distinct persons, co-equal, co-eternal. All right? That's Catholic teaching. There is one God. Now, if there is only one God, then let me ask you something. If someone wanted to pray, who should they pray to? They have to pray to the true God. If someone is not praying to the true God, then let me ask you a question. Of what value is their prayer? I think we all know it would be useless, right? Because they're praying to a false God, a God of their own imagination, of God of their own creation. It would be an idol, a false idol, and God doesn't tolerate that. So then why, let me ask you, would anything associated with the Catholic Church, from the Pope to a cardinal to a bishop to anyone in the hierarchy of the Catholic Church, even think or even entertain the idea of an interfaith day of prayer where we call people of all different faiths who believe in all kinds of different gods to pray to God. <laughs> you would call Christians to pray to the true God and call people of other faiths to repent and convert to faith in the one true God. That would seem a pretty basic idea that you can even derive from the Baltimore Catechism. All right, that's Catholic teaching. All right, well, with that in mind, let's, uh, let's listen to some Catholic news. I, I mean, let's see what's going on, right? I mean, yeah, not, not much, nothing significant. Laudator Jesus Christus, Vatican and World News. In the headlines this Wednesday, May the 13th, Pope Francis invites men and women across the world to join in Thursday's Day of Prayer for an end to the coronavirus pandemic. Now that sounds good. Inviting people around the world to pray to God to bring an end to the coronavirus pandemic. Amen. Let's call people from around the world. 
right? Now, remember that we're going to call people around the world to pray to what? The one true God. There's only one God, right? There's only one. The Catholic Church tells me that. So prayer to any other God would be would be vanity, would be frivolous, would be wrong. And not only wrong, it would be idolatry, right? Because prayer, I think by definition, is an act of worship, right? Yes. Okay. I think, I think so. It would be wrong. They would not be calling upon the true God. But even if you don't even want to believe it's a form of idolatry, what's the point? Hey, pray to your fake God. Pray to your false God. Pray to your imaginary God with us. Yay. And we'll accomplish something. No, invite people who believe in the God of scripture to pray. But let, let's see if that's what they mean. Because, I mean, they wouldn't mean anything else, right? I mean, come on. I mean, they wouldn't mean anything else, right? I mean, no, not even a possibility. An attack on a maternity ward in Afghanistan draws international condemnation. And the Filipino Catholic Church consecrates the nation to Our Lady of Fatima. In the Vatican, I'm Linda Bordoni. Pope Francis today reminded all men and women of goodwill across the globe to join in prayer, fasting and acts of charity to implore God for an end to the COVID-19 pandemic. Invito e incoraggio tutti a unirsi a questo evento. Greeting pilgrims during his general audience this morning, the Pope said prayer is the way to communicate and to listen to God. He said he welcomes the initiative of the Higher Committee for Human Fraternity, calling on believers of all religions to unite spiritually and implore God to help humanity overcome the pandemic on Thursday, the 14th of... Wait, so the Pope is now going along with the idea that, hey, people of all religions, please note all religions, that means they're not Christian. That means they have a different God. Right? That means they reject Jesus Christ as the eternal Son of God. They reject the Trinity. They do not have the true God. And he's going to say, yeah, come, let's all participate together on May the 14th. That's tomorrow. That <laughs> I'm, I don't get it. The catechism tells us there's only one God. There's only one God. Of May. Let's unite as brothers and sisters and ask the Lord to save humanity from the pandemic, to give enlightenment to scientists and to heal the sick. The Pontifical Council for Interreligious Dialogue, as well as numerous faith-based organizations across the world and many non-believers, have voiced their support for the initiative and assured their participation. Amongst them, Myanmar Cardinal Charles Bo, the president of the Federation of Asian Bishops Conferences, voiced his support for the initiative. Robin Gomes has more. I want to encourage all to live this time fruitfully, generously and with hope. Let us look out for one another. I join in the appeal of religious leaders to believers in God worldwide to set aside a day for fasting, prayers and supplications on May the 14th, wrote Myanmar Cardinal Charles Bo of Yangon, President of the Federation of Asian Bishops' Conferences, FABC. He was responding to the proposal of the Higher Committee of Human Fraternity that has called for a day of prayer and supplication to God on May the 14th for an end to the COVID-19 pandemic. Pope Francis on May the 3rd voiced his support for the initiative of the group that is made up of Jewish, Christian and Muslim leaders committed to reconciliation and peace in the world. Pointing to the immense suffering of all, especially the poor, Cardinal Bo said that the COVID-19 pandemic is like a world war. Even if the virus is defeated, he said, its legacy will live with us for decades. And if governments don't meet the challenge, he warned, they will lose the trust of their people. The gravest epidemic we face is the erosion of trust, he said, adding, nothing has affected the world as radically as this virus. The president of Asian Bishops' Conferences urged Asians to make use of this COVID-19 crisis to reach out to support others. Imagine and prepare for a changed world by building working relationships of trust that will stand for decades to come, he said. This, Cardinal Bo said, is a time to take to our world the goodness, mercy and love of God. I'm Robin Gomes. 
goodness, mercy, and love of God. Which God? Which God? This should not be a day of interfaith prayer. This should be a day of prayer for people who believe in the God of Scripture, the triunity, the triune God, the God, the one God, three distinct persons. I, I keep stating the doctrine of the Trinity, but I'm just, the reason I'm emphasizing that is that is a major emphasis. I mean, read the the the, the Nicene Creed, read the uh, Athanasius Creed, read uh, many, uh, stated in the liturgy in many different ways uh, and liturgical readings. I mean, there is, the, you know, just, there is one God. It's that simple. I mean, look at the Apostles' Creed. I mean, I mean, all of the creeds define who the Christian God is for, and, and, and then add scripture on top of that. Add to that the magisterial teaching that is outlined in the catechisms. One God. One God. And then that defines who that God is by defining the Trinity, defining the deity of Christ. So so why would you then call for interfaith prayer? Now, I'm going to make an argument. Maybe theologically, you believe in one true God. There's only one God, and that's who people should pray. And, th- and th- that kind of teaching is articulated clearly in the catechisms and the creeds and the councils of the church. And so theologically, you're on the, you're on the right page and you say the right words. But in practice, you come across as a universalist. You come across as, well, we're all brothers and sisters. We're all, brother- no, we're all brothers and sisters as being all created, but we're not brothers and sisters spiritually. no. If you're not a believer, I can't call you a brother spiritually. You're not a Christian, right? I can't call you. No, so so he's operating as a practical universalist. He's operating. His, his actions are going against the teaching of the church. And I'm not even arguing this from a non-Catholic perspective. I'm arguing that even as a, if I was a Catholic, I'd be like, what are we doing? I'm not going to participate in an interfaith day of prayer. I'm not going to participate in praying with people who are praying to a false god. I'm not going to do it. It's idolatry. It's false religion. I'm not going to do that. I'll call them as a day of repentance. Hey, repent and believe in the true God. So you would think Catholics would be bothered by this. But I don't have time to to, to go further into this. But I, I, I've already talked about this once. And I just wanted, the day is here. The day is here. And I just wanted to follow up and let you know, hey, it it just as was talked about on the Protestant radio station. Well, there you have the Pope. You have other leaders in the Catholic Church. Like, we support this. If, and, and people will, will want to argue, like, you know, what, what do you tell Protestants about that? What do you tell Protestants? What, I mean, you're not even following the teaching of your own church, in my estimation. That, how many gods are there? One. 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 There is one. And then it tells you, why can there only be one God? Well, if God is the supreme being. There can't be another supreme being equal to him. There can only be one supreme being. Like almost the, the, the Baltimore Catechism almost comes across like, do you really need to ask this question? And then it defines who that God is. It goes into the doctrine of the Trinity. Making, making it very clear that it, that the Baltimore Catechism is defining that there is one God and it's the Christian God. Period. End of. In fact, if it's if we're going to have all this interfaith prayer, then how do you exp- explain? We're going to have all this interfaith dialogue. We're all going to get along with one another. Well, the Catholic Church is the one who had the Inquisitions. The Catholic Church is the one who de- who who declared me as a Protestant, apostate, a heretic, anathema. Because look at the Council of Trent and the anathemas. They go against the very teachings that we teach. But hey, let's pray with Muslims, but we're going to condemn Protestants? <laughs> what? Oh, wait, we don't, you don't believe those anathemas anymore? Okay, well then let me as a Protestant come in and, and participate in, in, in uh, you know, communion. Oh, wait, I can't. Oh, wait, well, why not? <laughs> right? If, we're all, if we all believe in the same God and we're all, everyone's okay. I mean, like sometimes it's this weird like, Sometimes we're, we're Catholic, here's our theology, here's our doctrine, you must believe it. And then over here, hey, let's all just get together and sing Kumbaya like we're all one. But it, it can't be both ways. You can't be a practicing, functioning universalist while maintaining a, a doctrine that says people who don't hold to these teachings are anathema or are wrong. It, like, which is it? Which is it? And that's why you have supposedly have an authority that can define which way it's supposed to go. It can't be both. All right. I'll stop right there. 
Thank you for listening to this very short, very brief episode of the Non-Catholic Catholic Podcast, where we discuss all things Catholic. All right, we look at things from a we look at things from a Catholic perspective. Sometimes I say, "Hey, look, the Catholics here have a good point, and us Protestants, we've got to struggle with it." And then there's times I'm like, "Hey, Catholics, what are you doing?" I try to be fair and balanced. Sometimes people don't appreciate that, but I think every Catholic should be a little bothered by that. I think they should. I think they should. I think they should call for more theological clarity on their magisterium. All right, I'll stop right there. You can email me at newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com. All right, I'll, I've got to go now, get ready for another live stream, right? Yes, so if you want to join us, uh, look for the VBC podcast. I'll be live on the air here shortly. All right, God bless. Mm-hmm.